time. What is this trash you're reading? It's not trash, Daddy. It's lovely. It's called Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Moby what? Fun fact about me, I sat on the idea of this channel for a whole year before I uploaded my first video. And initially, Matilda was going to be my first review. I mean, I had the thumbnail done and everything. It's crazy. But the fact that I'm finally reviewing this video and we sitting at 14,000 subscribers now, child, listen, if there's ever something you wanna do or try out, just do it because you never know how things will turn out for you. It's either going to be a blessing or a lesson. But back to this movie. Again, this is one of my childhood faves. I even read the book as well because I was super obsessed with this story. Matilda has some trash ass parents and it truly surprises me how she nor her brother didn't get taken away and their parents thrown in jail because the neglect. A whole mess. But while watching this movie, I noticed even more things, and you know we're gonna talk about it. So let's get into it. The movie opens up in a nursery, and of course, there's narration. I think we've come to expect that by now. We then get to meet one of our supporting characters, Mr. Wormwood, who is not excited about his new responsibility. <sighs> Baby, he was more concerned about the hospital bill, which I can't really blame him for. I can't even judge him on that one. And usually I like to warm up to the counters, but listen, we started off early with this one cause they sorry asses placed the baby in the trunk of their station wagon, got the poor baby doing the electric slide all the way home in a hot ass car. And if that wasn't bad enough, they left the baby in the car once they got home. Just tragic. We then fast forward to when Matilda is a few months older and child, the mama. Miss Wormwood, of course, can't even stand to clean her up. And God bless the child that can fend for themselves because Matilda learns how to take care of herself because her parents weren't going to do it. She learned how to get herself dressed, learn how to cook for herself and clean up after herself. Is it me or did everybody's grandma have these plates or some iteration of it? But Matilda being the curious little cutie that she is, she asks her parents to buy her a book and they decline. Listen, when a toddler wants a book and asks for a book to read, you give them a book, okay? But Matilda eventually comes to a sad realization. She saw that whatever she needed in this world, she'd have to get herself. So one day, Matilda decided that she would go and get her own books. So baby, she pulled out the yellow pages. Child, y'all remember the yellow pages? <laughs> and looks up the address of her local library. This whole baby is able to walk to the library. She's crossing streets, reading signs, all of that. She finally makes it there and she's in heaven. And from then on, she goes there every day and she's having a grand old time. She eventually reads all the children's books and the librarian is watching all of this. And eventually she puts her up on game and suggests that she gets a library card so that she doesn't have to walk to the library every day. These books served as a safe haven for her. These books gave Matilda a hopeful and comforting message. You are not alone. So we fast forward to Matilda in her room, minding her business when her dad comes in with the bullshit. He comes in asking her about his packages and he finds all the books that she's gotten from the library. And of course, he has questions. Where'd all this come from? The library. He is so out of touch with his daughter. He don't even know her true age. He swears she's four. Matilda is a whole six years old. The baby not even in school. And because he's so out of the loop, he goes to ask someone who's just as clueless as he is. How old is Matilda? Four. I'm six and a half, mommy. Five then. And when Matilda tells her parents that she wants to go to school, again, she's supposed to be in school anyway. But when a child actually wants to go to school and asks you to put them in school, you put them in school, period. And here her trash ass daddy go. Who would be here to sign for the packages? Just a mess. And then her mother had the nerve to say this. You know, sometimes I think there's something wrong with that girl. 
And if Matilda didn't have it hard already, she got to deal with her asshole of a brother. Poor baby got trash ass parents and a trash ass sibling. We then go to Mr. Wormwood coming home, happy that he scammed another customer. He demands that the kids calculate his profits and he actually has the nerve to get mad at Matilda for coming up with the correct answer. What was my profit for the day? Could you repeat the last $10, one? $10,265. You saw the paper. I'm all the way over here. Matilda was like, how dare you try to insult me and my intelligence? But anyway, her dad says this. When a person is bad, that person has to be taught a lesson. Person? He didn't know that he set some things in motion with that statement. And from here, it gets interesting and really entertaining. So Matilda decides that it's time for a little smoke. So she wakes up bright and early to stir up a little trouble. First things first, she pours peroxide in her dad's hair oil and hightails it out of there, almost getting caught by her mom. Baby, Matilda couldn't wait for the show to start, but when it did, listen. What did you do to your hair? Ah! Matilda was getting her life, as she should, and Mr. Wormwood was pissed. So they set off to go to Mr. Wormwood's car dealership and tell me why this scoundrel is being watched by the feds. Yeah, we'll see why in just a second. We go back to the kids and their daddy showing them just how much of a scammer he is. See this junker? She's got 120,000 miles on her. Bumpers have fallen off. What do I do with her? I sell her. Child, he ran her using super, super glue to hold down the bumpers, putting sawdust in the engine to keep the engine quiet for a couple of miles, teaching his son how to reverse the mileage on one of the cars, and baby Matilda has had enough. Daddy, you're a crook. This is illegal. And you know Mr. Wormwood didn't want to hear none of that, and he says something that later inspires Matilda to do what needs to be done. I'm smart, you're dumb. I'm big, you're little. I'm right, you're wrong. And there's nothing you can do about it. Just as Matilda starts plotting, Mrs. Wormwood pulls up, screaming and hollering about winning some money at bingo. She decides to take the family to a fancy dinner and notice how Matilda was so gracious to give her daddy his hat. <laughs> yeah. So they make it to the restaurant and Mrs. Wormwood insists that Mr. Wormwood take off his hat and it's then that he realizes that it's stuck to his head. I guess we don't have to wonder too hard why and how this has happened. And while Miss Wormwood struggles to try and take it off, they bump into a server and food goes flying everywhere. So later that night, Mr. Wormwood, after the events of that day, just wants to sit down and have a nice family dinner in front of the TV. Not a home cooked meal in sight, just TV dinners. They are gonna be back hungry in an hour. But as they settle down to eat and watch TV, Mr. Wormwood sees that Matilda is minding her business reading a book, and you already know he has some shit to say. Are you in this family? <laughs> he reaches over to turn off the lamp and asks her what she's reading, and his simple ass was shocked at the name. What is this trash you're reading? It's not trash, Daddy. It's lovely. It's called Moby Dick by Herman Melville. Moby what? Chow. He starts tearing up her library book and tries to force her to watch TV. And at this point, Matilda is tired and really pissed because first of all, she was minding her business. Second of all, the book wasn't even hers. And third of all, why he always bothering her? And in this midst of her frustration, this happens. <laughs> I didn't do it. After this, Matilda wonders if she was the one that blew up the TV or if it happened on its own, but she will soon find out just how special she is. So, the next day, Mr. Wormwood meets Miss Trunchbull, the principal at the local elementary school, and this man, being the scammer he is, offers Miss Trunchbull a deal on the car in exchange for his daughter to attend her school. And of course, Matilda was really excited about this. And baby, this school looked like it was chewed up, spit out, and then built from the ashes of that. So despite all of this, Matilda was still excited until.
Matilda didn't want the smoke, so she goes to try to hide and ends up meeting Lavender, and Lavender lets her know what's up. Is that my teacher? No, that's the principal, Miss Trunchbull. They are interrupted by another student warning them that if they remain hidden where they are, Miss Trunchbull will find them. When Matilda asks her about Miss Trunchbull, Hortensia, yeah, that was her name, goes into a story about another kid that faced Trunchbull's wrath. So apparently, Julius decided to eat two M&Ms while Miss Trunchbull was in his class and baby Miss Trunchbull decided to make an example out of him by throwing him out of the classroom. Literally. And Matilda is officially spooked. Was Julius okay? After being thrown out the window? Of course he wasn't okay. He lived, if that's what you mean. Child, we find out Miss Trunchbull is a whole Olympian. Shot put, javelin, and hammer throw. And then Matilda learns about the chokey. Somebody please call the school board. The kids are not all right. And it wasn't too long before Matilda saw how Trunchbull was for herself. Ah, fresh meat. Miss Amanda Thripp was minding her business and then here come Trunchbull complaining about her pigtails. Do I allow pigs in my school? My mommy thinks they're sweet. Your mommy is a twit. Why she had to talk about her mama though? See, those are fighting words right there. But when Amanda tries to get a word in, Trunchbull sees red. But! But! Did you say but, Erythro? <laughs> Again, favor ain't fair. I always wonder if Matilda helped her out or not. But after all of that, it was time for Matilda to meet her teacher, Miss Honey. And thank God she was nothing like Miss Trunchbull. Miss Honey was really sweet and loving towards the kids and Matilda liked her instantly. She needed someone like her cause poor girl was going through it at home. But as Miss Honey is going through a math exercise, she learns just how smart Matilda is. Pretty soon you'll be able to do any multiplication, whether it's two times seven or 13 times 379. 4,927. Listen, Matilda is a whole genius and her parents are too dumb to realize it. But Miss Honey is excited about Matilda and runs off to tell Trunchbull about her and insists that she be placed in a higher grade. It's very evident that Miss Honey is not a fan of Trunchbull. I mean, who would be? And she tries to tread lightly, but when she brings up Matilda, Trunchbull wrongly assumes the worst. It's about the, the, the new girl in my class, Miss Trunchbull. My father says she's a real wart. Miss Honey insists that Matilda is a bright student who needs to be challenged and Trunchbull jumps to conclusions. She thinks Miss Honey is trying to dump Matilda off on the other teachers and that she couldn't possibly have her best interests at heart. Class, ah, I knew it. You can't handle the little viper so you're trying to foist her off on one of the other teachers. She ends up throwing Miss Honey out of her office and continues to do what she does best, I guess. We then go to Matilda who's made it home after school. Why is this baby walking home by herself? Child. She spots the feds outside chilling and when she goes inside, she sees her mother on the couch painting her toes. Mom, I'm home. Oh, how was school? The thing with Valerie's School was brother. great. Can't you see I'm in the middle of an important phone call? Like, did she just ask her there for fun or something? Like, how you gonna get irked at the girl for answering your question? But Matilda goes on to say how much she liked her teacher and how she enjoyed her first day at school, even though her mother couldn't even care to listen. I'm telling you, six hours a day at school is not enough. I'll say. Later on that night, while the Warm Woods are watching a boxing match and Matilda's in her little corner reading, they get an unexpected visitor. Hello. We don't give money, we don't like charities, we don't buy raffle tickets. Turns out, Miss Honey has come to try to talk to Matilda's parents, but of course, they have more important things to do, more important than their child. And Miss Honey had to make one thing clear. If you think watching some rotten TV show is more important than your daughter, then maybe you shouldn't be a parent. Knowing that Miss Honey was speaking straight facts, Mr. Wormwood lets her in, and of course his wife wasn't too happy about it. And they are not taking this seriously at all. Drinking beer in front of her, and even offering her one, 
child. And when Miss Honey tries to convince them that their daughter is remarkably smart and should skip a grade, Matilda's mom says this bullshit. A girl does not get anywhere by acting intelligent. Take a look at you and me. And poor Miss Honey tries to offer them examples to prove that having an education comes in handy. But Mr. Wormwood's guilty conscience causes her words to go right over his head. Say you were sued for selling a faulty car. The lawyer who defended you would have gone to college too. Too. What car? Sued by who? Who you been talking to? It was at this point that Miss Honey gave up and truly realized the fuckery Matilda had to deal with. But before she left, she gives Matilda a little gift of sorts. So, we then go to one of my favorite scenes. So, Miss Trunchbull calls for an assembly and apparently she's got smoke for Bruce Bogcharter. Turns out, Mr. Bruce stole a piece of her chocolate cake. And honestly, the way that chocolate cake looks, I can't say I blame him. Just look at it though. So to punish him, she makes him eat one slice of it. But the slice was pretty big and Bruce was cool with it at first. Like no fear in his heart at all. But then Trunchbull offers him some more and Bruce wasn't with it. Old boy was satisfied with that one piece. And then Trunchbull calls for the school cook to bring out a whole gigantic cake. I mean, this cake was huge. And as good as it looked, looking at this nasty ass apron the cook had on and then her scratching her butt, immediately no. But it appears Brucey doesn't have a choice. You wanted cake, you got cake. Now eat it. Listen, let me say that I watched the new Matilda and it was trash. But one of the things that made it trash was the cake in the new Matilda didn't look even a percentage as good as this cake. I mean, the cake was a supporting character. Like, don't nobody want this mess? Anyway, poor Brucey was about to tap out. But then... You can do it, Brucey! Yeah, you can do it! Go, Bruce! All his peers started to cheer him on and in turn gave him a second wind and he finished the cake. And before he could really celebrate, this happened. <laughs> Again, somebody please call the school board because this don't make no sense, abusing the babies like this. And if this day wasn't stressful enough, when Matilda finally makes it home after the street lights come on, instead of her parents asking her where she's been or if she's okay, or giving her the opportunity to tell them that the feds are literally outside watching, her daddy is more worried about his packages. Young lady, where were you? Miss Trunchbull kept the whole school late to display and some chocolate cake. That's the biggest lie I ever heard. So while Matilda's parents are talking about the contents of the packages, Matilda drops a bomb. So why don't you have it sent to the office? Because the cops may be watching the office. The cops are watching the house. Whole time, Matilda's mama up here thinking they are speedboat salesmen. Girl, there were so many times Matilda looked out for them and they just brushed her off. I swear. So we go to the kids hanging out before school starts. They are in the woods playing and they find a cute little creature and decide to bring it back to school so they can find out what it is. As they finally figure out that the creature they've caught is a newt, here comes Trunchbull and she's pissed. Um, what? Sell me a lemon? Not Trunchbull finding out that Mr. Wormwood was a whole scammer. <laughs> It was a scam <laughs> that Wormwood set up to come to her with the bullshit. So after she throws Matilda in the chokey, she's off to visit Miss Honey's class just as Miss Honey's prepping the class for her arrival. Don't smile. Don't even breathe loudly. Don't breathe at all. As Trunchbull gets settled in the classroom, Lavender brings her a pitcher of water which conveniently has a little surprise in it. And as Trunchbull starts to talk to the class, Miss Honey realizes that Matilda is MIA. When she quietly asks Lavender where she is, Lavender motions to let her know that she's in the chokey. So Miss Honey sneaks out to get her. Poor baby, probably traumatized. What I find surprising about this scene is how when she brought Matilda back in the class, Trunchbull had nothing to say. Probably because she was too busy hemming this child up. But the way she was carrying on in this movie, I expected her to at least pimp slap Miss Honey. But anyway, 
Terrorizing these kids has Trunchbull rather parched. So she reaches for the pitcher of water and Lavender gets excited for a second. But then Trunchbull's attention quickly shifts to Miss Amanda. And baby Amanda was prepared. Miss Honey taught us how to spell a long word yesterday. We can spell difficulty. You couldn't spell difficulty if your life depended on it. So the kids go on to recite the word and Trunchbull was bothered. Mrs. F, F, I, Mrs. C, Mrs. U, Mrs. L, T, Y. Why are all these women married? So Trunchbull finally goes to the pitcher to take a sip of water, not realizing that her water came garnished. Of course, she was pissed and ready to dish out more violence, and Matilda decides to make this a teachable moment. I just thought you'd like to know it smells snake. It's a newt. So Trunchbull starts asking if Matilda did this alone or if she had help. And you know Matilda ain't no snitch. And this enrages Trunchbull. Well, I'll pay you back, young lady. For what, Miss Trunchbull? For this newt, you pissworm! So again, Matilda insists that she didn't do anything, and Trunchbull starts talking that raw. Besides, even if you didn't do it, I'm gonna punish you, because I'm big and you're small, and I'm right and you're wrong, and there's nothing you can do about it. And baby, that's all Matilda needed to do what she's learning to do best, and the newt and Trunchbull got real acquainted. And after, Trunchbull tries to blame Matilda for this, but she ultimately has no proof. And before she leaves the classroom, she tries to assert her power once more by letting the kids know that she will be watching and waiting for them to fuck up, especially Matilda. And after all of this, Matilda confesses to Miss Honey that she's the one that tipped over the pitcher of water. But when she tries to demonstrate for Miss Honey, she's unable to do it. So Miss Honey then invites her over to her house after school and you know Matilda is delighted. Plus, her parents won't be looking for her anyway. Thank God Miss Honey wasn't a creep cause this could have went really left. But as they were walking to Miss Honey's, they passed by this big house where Trunchbull lives and Miss Honey starts to tell Matilda a story. So the story goes, there was once a little girl that lived there with both of her parents and then her mom passed. Then Trunchbull came to help them get adjusted to their new lives. Five years later, the father mysteriously dies. So of course, Trunchbull gained the home and everything the girl's dad left for her. But eventually, the girl grows up, moves out, and rents out a cottage for $50 a month. Child, $50 a month. And she's happier and free from Miss Trunchbull. But Matilda learns there's a deeper reason why Miss Honey told her this story. You were born into a family that doesn't always appreciate you. But one day, things are gonna be very different. It wasn't long after Matilda realizes that the girl in the story is Miss Honey and Trunchbull is her aunt. As they get settled inside, Miss Honey tells her about a doll she once had that she called Lissy Doll. They then start to talk about how grown-ups get just as scared as kids, which causes Matilda to wonder what Trunchbull is afraid of. Later, as Miss Honey is walking Matilda back home, they go past her childhood home again and they see Trunchbull leaving out to the gym. Child, she's putting all types of weapons in this trunk, like she is really a threat to society. Like seriously. And as she drives off, Matilda gets the bright idea to go inside the house, which turns out not to be so good because Trunchbull's car breaks down again. Not too far down the road and her strong ass is now on her way back to the house. So while this is happening, Miss Honey is telling Matilda how Trunchbull was selfish with the chocolates. She take a chocolate, bring it to her lips and say, much too good for children. Matilda then urges her to have one, but Miss Honey declines knowing that Trunchbull would know that something was up. Matilda then urges Miss Honey to go and get Lissy Doll. While they're off to do that, Trunchbull is arriving back at the house and she makes quite an entrance. Wormwood! And while she's reading Mr. Wormwood for filth, she notices the lid of the chocolate box is not how she left it. And then it was on. Now Matilda and Miss Honey have to find a way to escape. 
So they split up Matilda on one end and Miss Honey's on another. But when Miss Honey sees Trunchbull getting closer to Matilda, she causes a distraction that sends Trunchbull running her way. But then Matilda knocks over all the materials on the stairs, which then causes Trunchbull to up the ante. Tenny -ho! <laughs> Matilda makes it to the kitchen and under the kitchen table just in time before Trunchbull spots her. She's even able to shimmy up the table rather quickly before Trunchbull looks under it. And here goes this damn cake again. My God. And Trunchbull couldn't even enjoy it because Miss Honey causes another distraction. But not too fast. Trunchbull, like a rabid animal, is able to trace Miss Honey's scent up the stairs. And Miss Honey quickly makes it down the back stairway and her and Matilda head down to the basement. And by the Lord's grace, they make it out of there before they get rocked by this. Yeah, that would have been really bad. And then Matilda makes a really bad joke. We'll wait until she leaves again. Then we'll go get your dog. What? Just kidding. Miss Honey immediately makes Matilda promise her to never go back in the house again. Meanwhile, Miss Wormwood is entertaining the speedboat salesman, AKA the feds, and Matilda is very aware. Matilda, this is Bob and Bill. The cops. They are not cops, they are ace powerboat salesmen. Then Mr. Wormwood comes in and blows up her spot. Hi, Harry. Who are you? What is this, a hot tub party? With all this bad energy flying around, Matilda decides to take full advantage. So she encourages her dad to yell at her and at first her dad was just annoyed. But then he really gets into it and it was all Matilda needed to do this. And now Matilda knew how to unlock her new power and of course she started practicing and having a little fun cause let's be honest, she deserved to have a little bit of fun. But Matilda didn't get to enjoy it for too long cause she notices the feds creeping once again and she decides to confront them. You two men are gonna be in a lot of trouble very soon. And then Matilda being Matilda lets them know that she knows more than a little bit about the law. According to a constitutional law book I read in the library, if you don't have one, you could lose your job or even go to federal prison. And while they are threatening her with CPS and orphanages, she causes their car to fly down the street. And since Matilda is getting more confident with her powers, she goes off to catch a bigger fish, but before she could even go out the door, her brother had to try her. <laughs> So Matilda finally makes it to Trunchbulls and she's currently playing with weapons. I have no doubt that if Trunchbull was younger, she would have been the type to bust up a school. But anyway, Matilda goes to the roof to retrieve Lissy Doll. Matilda then goes downstairs and while Trunchbull is doing Trunchbull shit, she's able to get two chocolates out of the candy box. But when the window slams, this gets Trunchbull's attention. So Matilda decides it's time to put a little fear in Trunchbull's heart. So she starts making the clock chime, makes the lights flicker, causes things to move around, and then this. This was like the icing on the cake, the cherry on top of a sundae. Trunchbull was officially spooked and she hightails it out of her own house. But there is a slip up. Matilda loses her ribbon and Trunchbull notices the familiar scent. So the next day, Matilda gives Miss Honey Lissy Doll and the chocolates. But before Miss Honey could figure out how she was able to do this, in comes Miss Trunchbull, looking like who done it, what for, and why the hell they didn't finish it off. I will be teaching your class today. So now, Miss Honey is fearing for her life, and while she's prepping for Trunchbull's terror on her class, Matilda shows her that she indeed has powers, and it's very real. No more Miss Nice Girl. So Trunchbull finally comes in, and she wastes no time. She forces the kids to get in a line and tells them that she knows one of them came to her house. She even decides to let them in on a little something. Did you know it was illegal to enter someone's home without their permission? Yes, Miss Trunchbull, sir. Then Trunchbull pulls out the ribbon she found and Matilda is spooked for the time being. 
And as Miss Honey tries to intervene, Trunchbull starts to get personal. Miss Trunchbull, I was the one who was at your house last night. I broke your arm once before I can do it again, Jenny. Trunchbull once again narrows in on Matilda, but Matilda ups the ante by making it seem like Miss Honey's dad, Magnus' spirit, writes a message for her on the chalkboard. And baby, that was it for Trunchbull. Child, she gets jumped by some erasers and she's out for the count, temporarily. And when she again tries to exert some power by throwing this kid out the window, Matilda intercepts and makes the kid a weapon. Trunchbull lands on a globe in the classroom and Matilda takes her for a spin. And after this, Trunchbull's dizzy ass runs clean out of the classroom. And baby, this is all the other kids need to see because they go ham and run her out of her own school, as they should. And finally, Trunchbull was gone and Miss Honey was able to move back into her father's home. Sometime after, while Matilda was at Miss Honey's, her parents pull up. Apparently, the feds are closing in and they have to escape to Guam. Now, Matilda is not happy about this news and instantly runs to Miss Honey to save her and her dad was irked. Get in the car, Melinda. Matilda. Whatever. And then her mom says this. Why would she want some snotty, disobedient kid? Because she's a spectacularly wonderful child and I love her. Then Matilda decides to pull out some adoption papers. Child, this girl had adoption papers since she was tall enough to Xerox. She was always looking for an out. But after her parents' shock wears off, they finally do the only good thing they've ever done for this girl. You're the only daughter I ever had, Matilda. And I never understood you, not one little bit. Who's got a pen? And of course, Mr. Wormwood wanted to know one thing. You're not gonna be calling us for support payments or something like that, huh? And they were off, parents to one scoundrel of a son again and baby matilda was happy she now has a real mom who loves her and most of all wants her and this is pretty much the end and here are my final thoughts now i know we've already determined that matilda's parents was trash but i feel like we need to really discuss this shit <laughs> from jump I mean the very first days of her life they made it crystal clear that she was not wanted like, why even have this child if you knew you didn't want her? Y'all are riding this kid around in this vehicle, not strapped down, you're driving all crazy, you complain about feeding her, watching her, mad that she likes reading books, mad that she wants to go to school, didn't even know her age, wasn't even preparing her for school. This girl had to teach herself ADLs while her mama was busy playing bingo and her daddy was busy selling lemons giving it's all good dealership teas. Child, then Miss Trunchbull, baby, she better be lucky that social media was not around in those days. Cause the way she would have been canceled and jobless, she was torturing those kids, putting them in closets with dripping pipes and screws sticking out, forcing kids to binge out on cake made by an unclean cook, hitting kids across the heads, giving them concussions, throwing kids out of windows, out into fields, my God. And the school looked like it should have been condemned. Did all the parents just not care? Did they not have any other options? What kind of town was this? See, I have so many questions. But listen, I am so glad Miss Honey was around to look after those kids and most of all to be a parental figure for Matilda. Because while she did a lot on her own out of necessity, no child should have to raise themselves. I'm glad that her parents did their only good deed and gave up their parental rights to Miss Honey. But low key, how shitty of a parent you gotta be for your daughter to be barely uh, tall enough to Xerox and the first thing that she chooses to copy is some adoption papers. Damn. But anyway, that's it y'all. Thanks for watching per usual. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And don't forget to check me out on Spotify to watch my videos there, including block content. Also, the audio versions of my vids are available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and more. See you next time, you guys. Bye.